All right, welcome to our quick review of the concentric zone model. And uh, the information provided is designed to accompany the 10th edition of the book People, Places, and Cultures. And I am, of course, Ms. Gall, and I'll be your host. So, um, the concentric zone model is the oldest of our North American city models. And we're going to look at several of those, and we'll also ultimately look at several um, international models as well. So, a few things you got to know. One is that it comes out of um, Ernest Burgess's study of Chicago in the 1920s. Okay, so you might see it labeled Burgess's model or Burgess's concentric zone model. You need to recognize it both ways. Um, it's useful to know that it came out of Chicago in the 1920s just to provide you with some background into it. Um, and also when we talk about our, our models, they go in Chronology matters when we're looking at how do we apply these models to the city. So when we're looking at cities that are um, at least already started or partially developed in the 1920s, <clears throat> right, the concentric zone model will apply to that part of the city that's from around that time period. And then other models will apply increasingly as we get, um, as the cities expand and also as they get older. But enough about that background kind of stuff. So when we're talking about the um, baseline concentric zone model, we've got five concentric circles, really. And the next slide is a picture of the model, so you'll be able to kind of see what I'm talking about here. And we define them by their functions. In other words, what purpose they serve. Okay, And that's always when we're looking at space in cities, looking for what purpose does a specific space serve. Okay, so Zone number one, which is the center circle, and I'm going to actually do some flipping back and forth here. Okay, so the center circle, so our red circle, is what's called the central business district. Colloquially, we call this downtown. Okay, so they call it the central business district because it's really where most of the main businesses are found. It's the most intense concentration of um, businesses. It's also where land prices are the highest. Okay. The next circle there um, is what's called a zone of transition. And when they say zone of transition, they're being very literal. Okay, so zone of transition in this case means that we are transitioning from our central business district where all of our, or the bulk of our economic activity occurs slowly but surely into residential districts. So, um, this is kind of an area, of a mixed-use area. So there's some businesses there. There might be some light manufacturing um, kind of thing. And these are kind of, we talk about um, housing values and things like that. Really what we're talking about is these are kind of a, the um, cheaper houses and things like that. So this is our green circle here on our model. Um, okay. And it's that transition space, again, between the commercial space and the central business district to those outer rings, which ultimately are our, um, our housing rings. So zone three is um, a ring of closely spaced, but pretty nice homes, not bad homes. Um, and they're occupied by the blue collar labor force. And in our model here, this is the orange ring. Okay. And just to be clear, when we talk about blue-collar labor force, what we're really talking about are our folks who work with their hands. Okay, so our electricians, our plumbers, our really, um, so we put our trades folks, the electricians, the plumbers, and the like, in there because they work with their hands. But also when we talk about blue-collar, we're talking about um, people who are in lower-paid jobs. Okay. So these are called kind of the working men's homes is another way to think about this. Okay. Zone four, these are our middle class residences. The properties are a little bit bigger, the houses are a little bit nicer, um, the yards are a little bit bigger. And uh, this is our blue ring right here. Okay. And then when we talk about the last zone. Um, the yellow ring on the edge there, that's really, that's our suburbs. So that's where our wealthier people live, our folks who can afford to commute a decent distance into the central city in order to uh, 
in order to work and in order to, um, you know, do things like go to sporting events or cultural events or things like that. Okay, so this has been our quick review of the concentric zone model, and um, you do need to recognize the graphic. Okay, so when you see it, you should recognize it. If it looks familiar, that's because they basically kind of ripped off von Thunen. <laughs> okay, um, you'll never have to draw it for the test, but you should be able to, as soon as you see it, you should know when you're looking at circles like this, you're either looking at von Thunen or concentric zone, and then when you look at the questions, it'll tell you more specifically which one you're looking at, okay, whether you're dealing with farming or whether you're dealing with cities. Um, the concentric zone model is our oldest model. Those come out of Chicago in the 1920s, put together by a guy named Ernest Burgess. Um, and again, it's those five concentric circles, starting with commercial activity in the middle, followed by kind of transitional activity, so some business, some um, homes that are not quite as nice, and then as you get further and further out, those last three rings are homes that are increasingly nice with increasingly large yards because people are working, um, or they're traveling further to work, and also in general, historically, they would have been the folks who were making more money. So if you have any questions about this, by all means, please let me know. I'd be delighted to answer any questions you have, just bring them into class, and I'll see you the next time we meet.